usually I'm the type of guy that when I want to know something, it comes to me. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's the alien blood that I might have, you know, or whatever it is. But um, I wanted to have some factual information at some point, you know. Oh, you know what? There's one thing I didn't tell you about. So I, I did this uh, project with this guy named Nassim Haramein. Mm. Okay, this dude's a physicist. And he's, I, he, I've interviewed him before on my shows, but he just came out with this new movie called Connected Universe, where he's talking about how advances in physics are showing us that we're living in an artificial, an artificial simulation. And he just put forth a theory that just, came, that just passed peer review about how we might be able to mathematically prove life after death through physics. Mm, that'd be sick. Okay, so this is what he says. He says that the human, be- the human brain is not where memories and experiences live. He says it's looking, looking for that inside the brain is like opening up a radio and looking for the musician. It's like he's not in there, mm. right? He's out there. The, the radio is just a receiver. Right. So what he is saying it's is... It's like your soul. Yeah, so what, so, so what he's saying is that the, uh, that the energetic fabric of the universe is where us is cataloged. Right. And that we are just single-tuned instruments walking around inside this digital reality, and we receive our consciousness based on our frequency. Yeah. So therefore, if the body dies, the consciousness is still there. Right. So, what, so that's what, a ghost? The consciousness is the ghost? No, the consciousness never, li- never resided inside the human. So what, what so neuroscience is human, where does your con- consciousness, where does your consciousness go? It's it's in the ether. It's in the it's in the energetic fabric. So of, I'm of saying you become one with universe. you become one with the universe, or are you still a person? No, we're we're still one with the universe. So you you're always one with the universe. So what do you become? That's different. What's different about being dead or alive? You're not incarnated into the perception of a physical body. So what are you incarnated in? You're just incarnated into your own awareness. Oh, so everyone's just walking around like, but you still have a physical touch, like like sex and shit like that. We're here at the Sedona Creative Life Center, and this was the Sedona screening of the new movie, Connected Universe, with Nassim Haramein. Nassim, fantastic film. Thanks for taking a moment. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here in Sedona. It's been such a long time, and it was great to be able to present the movie by Malcolm Carter. did an awesome job, so I'm pretty excited to be touring with it. So... You know, there's a lot of people in the past that have attempted to tie everything together. The advances in physics that are giving us new understandings of the universe, the metaphysical aspect of it, how our thoughts affect our reality. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the cutting edge science really helps us to blend physics with what we know to be real on on an ethereal and spiritual level. And this film comes as close as anybody to accomplishing that. How does that feel? Uh, it's it's exciting um you know i think there's so much more to do but it's definitely the first step i think in understanding a fundamental relationship between particles and matter and stellar objects um so all of a sudden you know you're not just unifying physics but you're unifying like very deep level of of biology and understanding of of awareness and consciousness and and self-organization system and all this stuff so it has really deep implications so i'm excited to like explore all these other things uh, as we move forward I don't think that a lot of people realize that academia and the scientific community are almost as rough and tumble a crowd as the political crowd. It's like science is a contact sport, especially when you're right out there on the cutting edge. How are you holding up with all that? Um, It's been a long journey for me. Um, You know, uh, it it took me a while to not take it personally and not feel, you know, somewhat destroyed by you know what was sent i mean some of it was pretty i mean i got mooned in physics conference i mean all sorts of things but um you know it being being what it is um there's a level at at one point where i understood you know that uh it's understandable it's 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 okay it, 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 you know people has invested their whole life in a certain view they're not gonna just drop it overnight because some young guy came up with something new you know um that's when i was younger right um so it, it takes time it takes time for people to consider it it takes time for people to like you know kind of see how it feels you know before they jump um so but it's happening and that's what's important and i'm i'm getting better at not taking it personally so we're gonna let people see the trailer right now if you don't mind okay What 
really keeps me going, this transformation I can see when a person realizes that they're connected to everything and that they matter in the universe. We experience this life and most people don't ask, like, how did I get here? What is this life? How am I moving trillions of atoms around? We often hear the concept, everything is connected, it's all one. For many people, it resonates as something true. But how is that true? Some of the work I've been doing starts to open the door to understanding how everything is connected. Everything we experience as reality is actually made up of 99.99999% space. So maybe instead of looking at matter, defining the space, I start to think maybe it's space that defines matter. When I look carefully at the natural world, I found this interconnectivity of all things. And I started to wonder, what is the source of this self-organizing system? Sex, I, has, I, to, I think sex has to be a very big part of existence. You know, we had that because conversation. It's, it's, yeah. the, it's the thing that people enjoy the most, you know, and it's, it's our reason for living is sex. Everything is sex. So I don't hear, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't hear nothing about sexuality in, in the, in the uh, you know, in this alien talk. There has to be some sex going on because that's what everybody wants to do all day. Well, Animals have sex. Everyone has sex. The physical, the physical realm is like that. You know, what, I, what about I, I wrote, the non-physical realm? You don't think it's about sex at all, no more? I wrote, I, I wrote a book called Messiah, right? It's about, when, it's about Christ coming back during the, uh, the apocalypse to thwart the efforts of the New World Order. But there's a scene in, in the book where him and Mary have cosmic sex. So what happens is it's not a physical like intercourse. It's a dance of the souls that is ecstatic. Right. And so there's, you know, when we think about sex like, like, like you know, Touch. Discovery Channel animal shit. There are probably ways for two beings to mingle in a in a yeah, but that's not sex. Way. That's dancing. Sex is entering into somebody. Yeah, penetration it, is sex. I know, but there could be an energetic dance of that. I mean, I have well. energy as well, but there has to be some physical penetration to consider real sex. But if you're not physical, then you don't have physical. Penetration. I want to be physical forever. I like sex. Well, then you can keep coming back. You can incarnate. Yeah, oh, so yeah. you have a choice. They th they think that the. Um, the energetic fabric that consciousness resides in enables us to come and live life after life after life. I mean, think about this. You can, so you, you, you can't come back, you're saying? I, I think you can. Oh. You hit on something very interesting because if you were just this ethereal being, right, that'd be boring, like, immediately. So for whatever reason people think we come into, the, into physical form, it could be something that is no more complex than... We just do this for something to do. You know, we have, we are, we're these energetic-based creatures, but in order to have a physical experience and, and really learn and grow, we need to come into a physical world. Life is more or less a test. Bridging the gap between science and spirituality is, to me, a human necessity. And again, congratulations for taking us a step further in that direction. Yeah, it's critical. I think that a lot of uh, what is known in spirituality is actually physics we haven't understood. And the physics that are being developed right now are starting to actually explain some of these more spiritual concepts, you know, like the concept that we're all one. 
and that we're all connected. That was, that's been there for a very long time. It's appealed to people for a long time. People, you know, kind of resonate with that. It sounds true to them, but how is it true, right? Like it, 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 now we're starting to understand there's real mechanics underlying these uh, more philosophical concepts that actually have to do with the creation of, of the world around us, the, the reality we exist in. I feel that when science actually gives us an algorithm that explains life after death, the continuation of consciousness, that it will be a paradigm shifting event in human civilization. I agree. I totally agree. And I think we're getting really close. We're starting to realize, and from the latest paper I published at uh, um, Neuroquantology Journal, um, we actually describe consciousness as an interactive field that's not localized inside your body or inside your brain, but, you, but that you're acting as an antenna that's interacting with this field of information. So, so, so when, when we talk about life after death, then it starts to make sense, right? Like, oh, okay, yeah, you're not confined, you know, your consciousness is not confined to your body. Your body is an expression of that consciousness that's information that's in the field of information that connects um, to your body. But when your body goes, uh, that field is still present. So, um, and, and we're starting to understand that field. And I mean that not just in the philosophical matter, but actually we're starting to understand it in the physics of it, that it is the fundamental field that creates matter, mass, energy, gravity, all the forces we see. Well, you know, neuroscience is just starting to embrace the idea that consciousness doesn't die with the brain. Mm -hmm. And the way you laid it out in the film was so elegant that I think it really goes a long way to explaining to the general public and to people how that might actually work mm -hmm. on a physical level. So again, another milestone in your film. So what Nassim is saying is that now from a physics standpoint, there is mathematical formulas to show that consciousness does not die with the brain. Because mm. neuroscientists up until now would say, consciousness resides in the brain, when the brain dies, consciousness dies. I got it when you said it the first dead. time, I understood. So it, this, is, this is a serious breakthrough. It's it, because we're getting closer and closer to proving life after death. Now how is he science. proving this? Is it like a mathematical equation, like Einstein type shit, or what's, yeah, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, physic in physics. I can't wait to see that. What, yeah, what happens with the, uh, once we're able to actually physically prove that, that life after death exists in a scientifically valid manner, it changes, it, it's another thing that could change everything about how we do things on the planet, hmm. how we relate to each other. Well, sounds good. I like that. I'd like to learn a little more about it. It's interesting. I'll send you the link, because I did the... Uh, it's like you're very interested in things that don't have answers. Yeah. It's going to always keep you chasing. You think? I mean, if you have no answer and you're always looking for it, for sure. But everything, that, you, everything that you're into has no answers. Well, it has answers. They're just elusive. No, they're not answers. To me, the... the they're the, not answers. The, really? They're not factual answers. We know what a fucking answer is. Well, not yet. Is. You, you see, know that's, what what's, it, that's what's everything, so exciting. Everything that you're chasing has no answers. So unless you find them, you'll be chasing them. So yes, unless you do find answers, you're like Raiders of the Lost Ark for shit that has never been found. I know, but we're on the verge of finding this stuff. Well, I'm, on I'm, the verge. On the, I'm on the verge. First of all, if you, if, when you look at that movie, we've been on the verge. We're 100 years behind. It's just that, you know, they've made us fucking stupid so we can't evolve. 